As the pastor of a thriving church, John Barton never had time to be sick. But that was about to change. And I felt something in my throat, like a lump or something. So when I went to the restroom, I, I, I spit it out. Um, it was a gulp of blood. Even then, it took five days of debilitating fatigue, fever, and chills before John went to the doctor. In fact, he went to three, including a trip to the ER. But no one could find a cause. I had just come from traveling out of the country. I just started thinking, well, I hope I didn't get into contact with someone that was sick or what have you. One morning at his twin brother Michael's home, John started throwing up. That just started to progress, and then all of a sudden, he just kept saying that his head is numb. It felt like my head was about to explode. And I said, call 911 doesn't feel right, call 911. I felt too weak to pray. The only thing I had the strength to say was, God, help. Just help. If I don't get the help I need, God, if you don't heal me, I feel like I'm going to die. John was taken to Our Lady of Lourdes Medical Center in Lafayette, Louisiana. By then, his whole body was numb. He couldn't talk or hear and was having trouble breathing. While doctors put John on life support, Michael started recording, believing for a miracle. I wanted it documented for the doctors to see, and I especially wanted it documented for him to see whenever he got out. That was my hope. That was my faith. After four days of testing and still no answers, neurologist Dr. Kevin Hargrave finally figured it out. Acute demyelinating encephalomyelitis, which is easier to abbreviate as ADEM. Usually triggered by a viral infection, ADEM is a disease that causes inflammation in the brain and spinal cord, resulting in a host of problems, nerve damage, paralysis, and in severe cases, death. The brainstem was completely obliterated with inflammation. If you look at the images, I mean, there's no square pixel of a brainstem that was not affected. This was the worst case that I've seen. He pretty much said, he, we just, we give it a 10% chance of surviving this. It was tough to swallow. It was, you know, it was, it was something I did not want to hear. They treated John with anti-inflammatory drugs, hoping to at least keep him alive. At times he was aware, but still unable to move, hear, or communicate. I felt so helpless. I literally felt, I felt death. I feared and predicted that if he did have a prolonged survival, he'd be ventilator dependent with a tracheostomy and a feeding tube. Still, John, his family, his church, and now people around the world prayed, believing for a miracle. I may not have known it in my natural sense, but in my spirit, in my spiritual sense, I, I knew he was going to come out. Then, after one week in the hospital, he was able to move fingers or toes a little bit. When a patient in his situation shows any degree of improvement, that's the best sign of further improvement to come. My faith is just <laughs> it's activated, it's, it's holding me up you know, prayers and that was going for, because I was needing it too. <laughs> With the help of a trach, John's lungs started working on their own. Doctors also attached a voice box so he could talk and worship God. Oh God, I know I've been here by your trach. About four weeks later, he was moved to a rehab facility where he continued to improve. As soon as he rose out of that wheelchair, off that walker, and he started walking again, I realized, OK, yeah, he's, go he's going to make a comeback. Oh, yeah. Different doctors would come in. It's like, wow, you're a miracle. You're a miracle. Then after a month in rehab, John went home. I just was thanking God. Lord, I thank you for giving me a miracle. Lord, I thank you for your grace. In the past, honestly, I was a big skeptic, even though I'm a Christian. 
but I'm no longer a skeptic. John is still the pastor of Living Life Church and recently married Lori. I'm just living with a peace and just a joy and this sense of gratitude to be alive. It has taken my faith to a whole nother level. I'm believing for things that I have never believed before. It's like, if God spared me from that, oh my God, I trust Him. I hope you can look at this story and say, if God spared him from that, then surely I can trust him. I know there are many of you who have things that you're praying for that are heavy on your heart, needs in your lives. So before we pray with you and for you today, we want to share a couple of other stories of encouragement. This is Brenda who on YouTube contacted us and said, I suffered a brain bleed 29 years ago. The doctors told my family to say their goodbyes. By the grace of God and his mercy, I am still here. I've been blessed and able to watch my two children grow up and get married and enjoy, get this, my eight grandchildren. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah indeed. Wow. Well, a viewer on Instagram said, my son contracted COVID-19, ended up in the hospital. We prayed and believed, let me underline that, and believed that God would heal him. After two months, he's been released, wow. fully healed. Praise the Lord. Listen to that doctor in that story. He said, even though as a Christian, in the past, I was a skeptic. I, I didn't believe in the miraculous. You look in the Bible, and, and here are the disciples of Jesus. These, these, are, these are Christians. They have followed him for three years of ministry. They saw Lazarus raised from the dead. They saw these things. They experienced miracles. At the same time, when Mary Magdalene came with the good news that Jesus was raised from the dead, they did not believe her. Now, when Jesus showed up for them, the first thing he did was rebuke them for their hardness of heart, that they did not believe the good news. Don't have that hardness. The Bible talks about an evil heart of unbelief. Open yourself to the impossible, because that's the realm where God lives. He does everything. With him, all things are possible. Everything you see is created by him. Everything around you is a miracle. So how much more will he do a miracle for you today if you only believe? Here's that wonderful pastor. As soon as he can have a voice, they give him a voice. The first thing he says, by your stripes, I am healed. He's believing for a miracle. He's believing for the impossible. How about we do that? Let us change our thinking and believe the good news. The good news. All your sins are forgiven. The good news. All, all your diseases have been carried away. Isn't that wonderful? That's great news. Let's pray that that will happen to you right now. Lord, we just turn away from every thought that is not captive to your anointing, to your possibilities. We say to our innermost being, how big is possible? How great is his power towards us who believe. So Lord, we believe and we ask that you would help our unbelief, that we would be transformed into believers in your miracle power. Now stretch forth your hand to do mighty wonders, to do miracles, signs and wonders in people, wonders that doctors will be amazed and come and visit to see the miracle that you have done. Do it now, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Terry, God's given you something. Yeah, someone, you have an injury to your arm. It's your upper arm where the bulk of your muscle is, and there's been a deep cut that's gone in there, and infection has formed. 
there's a, it's like your arm is on fire. God is healing that for you. No MRSA, no sepsis. He's just healing the whole thing. And it, it is miraculous because it's very, very infected, but you're just gonna feel that burning feeling wane as God heals you completely in Jesus name. Um, there's a woman, your name is Dorothy. God's calling you by name, Dorothy. You've had inflammation of the heart and I'm just seeing your heart flutter. Uh, and so there's a fluttering beat that's, that's been caused by this. God's restoring your heart, Dorothy. Believe it, receive it, get that new energy, that new pace in your heart. Now, in Jesus' name, be healed. Amen and amen. If you've been healed, if you've been touched, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.